on the screen. My screen's fine. You may continue or? There we go. go. Okay. (laughs) Thank you. Um, Now let's talk about new growth in the Net Digest. This does, again, include exemptions. New growth, we had 2.9%. The Net Digest grew 2.9, which is 1.3 million additional revenue from the prior year tax levy. We did budget for 1.5% growth, new growth in the budget. So when you take what we budgeted versus what we actually results of 2.9, we're actually going to be receiving $800,000 additional in re- additional revenue than budgeted. This is probably hard to see on the screen, but this was something that just kind of gives you a history of the, the tax year, the general fund budget, the value of a millage, the millage rate, and the tax revenue over from 2018 <laughs> all the way up to 2019. Um, The first column giving you the tax year. The second column just giving you a basis of what the adopted general fund budget was. Um, The third column giving you the value of the mill. The fourth column giving you the millage rate. The fifth column giving you the increase or the decrease in that millage rate from the prior year. The tax revenue that was collected in that year or that was levied in that year. Uh, The increase or the decrease in revenue from the prior year gives you the cumulative revenue of new growth that we have um, experienced. Uh, Again, we did not receive any new growth um, during the recession. It wasn't until 2017 that we really saw new growth in the digest. Uh, But cumulatively since that, we've had $3.9 million in new growth. Uh, The value of the rollback, of course, again, because of the recession, there was no rollback in um, the millage rate because the digest was actually declining. Um, but since 2014, um, we have rolled back the millage rate, and the cumulative revenue from that rollback um, was $9.2 million. This is just a graph pretty much showing what we've discussed and already know about the recession. Since 2009, you can see that our millage rate value was $4.3 million. Um, for 2019, uh, it's $4.6 million. And you can see just by the graph, the sloping down, showing that during the recession, we had four, let's see, five years in a row that we actually had to decline in the value of the mill. It wasn't until 2015 that we experienced an uptick. And it wasn't until 2018 that we really caught up to 20, 2009's value of the mill. You know, we talk about the digest and we want to be able to make sure it's diversified into all the different categories. And this is how the 2019 digest um, is broken out for Douglas County. We're around 56.87% residential, 24% commercial, almost 14% industrial, 1% motor vehicles, utilities is (laughs) 2.49%, conservation is 0.58%, Agriculture is 0.31%, and all the other categories make up a small 0.14%. This gives you um, a comparison from 2018 to 2019. Each of those categories, dollar values, how they either have increased or decreased. Um, And you can see the largest decrease um, from 2018 to 2019 is motor vehicles, and we've discussed that. We're receiving um, title ad valorem tax for that. You can see that our industrial um, category increased by 111 million, our commercial increased by 50 million, and our residential increased by 186 million. This is something also that had to go in the paper along with the notice of property tax increase was to get the fair market value, the impact of what not rolling back the millage rate um, would be to the fair market value, the average home. I double checked with our appraisal department to get what the Douglas County's fair market value is for a homestead. Uh, it's 175,000. When you take the assessed value of that at 40%, you get 70,000. They have a homestead exemption, it's at $6,000. So their taxable value is at 64,000. When you take that rate, um, that the 10.213 versus the 9.971, it's an increase of 15. Uh, $15.49 for a $175,000 home. You have to do the same thing for a non-homestead. 
Uh, that fair market value was $200,000 um, at valued, the assessed value at 40% at $80,000 because they have no exemptions, that's their taxable value. The difference between rolling back versus not rolling back was $19.36. Again, this is just another ad that has to be placed in the paper regardless if you decide to roll back or not. It is the current 2019 Property Tax Digest and five-year history of the levy. And it pretty much is a summary of, of what we just went over about the history of the, the millage rate, the history of the digest, and the taxes uh, that are levied. We always like to remind taxpayers um, where your tax dollars go. Um, as you know, the Board of Education um, sets their millage rate. Uh, they are in the process. They will be adopting their millage rate on the 26th. Um, they're going to be, um, if all goes as the way they're advertising, they're going to be adopting at 20.75 mils, uh, which is 67% of where your tax dollars go when you pay. When you're just looking at the Board of Education and county government, this does not include the cities. We're county government, if we, um, if it's adopted at the 10.213 mills, then we would make up 30, around 33%. Just to kind of um, summarize um, the, this process and what we have um, tonight as well as next week, um, the public hearings for the proposed millage rate of the 10.213, which is the same rate as last year, not rolling back. Of course, we have the public hearing today at 10 that we're doing now. We have one at 6 o'clock tonight. Then we also have one next <coughs> Tuesday, the 27th at 10 a.m. Adoption of the county millage rate would follow after the public hearing next week on the 27th. Um, as you know, the county has to adopt the Board of Education's millage rate. The Board of Education is, considering, is considered a recommending authority, but the Board of Commissioners has to officially adopt the Board of Education's millage rate. The Board of Education is planning on adopting theirs on um, Monday, August the 26th. And again, they're looking at an MO maintenance and operation millage of 19.65 and a bond of 1.1, being a total millage rate of 20.75. And then we're looking at adopting the um, county would be adopting their millage rate along with the Board of Education's on the 27th next Tuesday. So that concludes my presentation, um, if you have any questions. Thank you so much, Director Holman. Um, the, your presentation was very thorough, but at this time I would like to open up this uh, public hearing to allow our citizens uh, to comment on what you just uh, presented here and give us some feedback, the Board of Commissioners. Uh, at this time I would like to open this public hearing to the citizens of Douglas County and would ask if anyone would like to speak, please come forward and you have five minutes to deliver. Good morning. And give us, when you come up, please give us your name and your address, please, for the record. Thank Ingrid you. Landis Davis, 1670 Harvest Hill, Douglasville, Georgia, 30134. I just want to say that um, in 2007, I moved here, um, I actually bought my house in 2006, but I moved here in 2007 from California. And most of you are um, familiar with Prop 13. Proposition 13 um, would not allow any further tax increase to, for businesses or homes, unless it was a new business or you know, there was a sale. Um, I moved to California from Florida in uh, 1991, and this Prop 13 was adopted in 1978. By the time I moved to, I already had property in California, I had it for many years. By the time I, I moved to the property and actually built the house, mm -hmm. um, the community that I moved into was you know, like a, a rural community that was kind of transitioning somewhat, but um, into, uh, you know, more urban, not really urban, but, you know, more, more, act, more active than it was before. Um, I say all of that to say, <laughs> we had, it was a small community, um, we had one fire station, and that fire station 
was built um, just about the time, uh, maybe about five years after Prop 13 took place. It was a, turned out, when you go in the fire station, it was an empty building. It had no um, bathroom, no running water, just had the building. Reason? Prop 13. No money. Couldn't raise no money. Couldn't increase the property value. Couldn't do anything sitting up there with an empty building and a fire engine that went 25 miles an hour in a community that was fire prone, surrounded by forest. I say all of that to say, don't be afraid. I'm a property owner. I live on a relatively fixed income. I'm retired. I just, but I still say, don't be afraid. And I don't, I don't mean that like, you know, you have fear, but I mean, you know, don't, don't hesitate to serve the community by raising the taxes a little bit. $19, not gonna kill anybody, but it may save a life. It may save a life where you can pay for a fire engine or pay for, pay for a staff or pay for, you know, we're building buildings for seniors. We gotta have people in them. We gotta have the uh, furniture. We've got, you know, you've gotta service this building. It took a lot to bring, because I, became, I got elected fire chief, it took a lot to bring that building, get that building, get fire, get water, get, we had to have the water hauled in for the fire truck, you know what I'm saying? So my point is, we don't wanna shortchange our citizens by not bringing up a, 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 couple, of, a couple of percentages of, of the millage rate. That's all I gotta say, thank you. Thank you so much, um, Ms. Davis, for your uh, presentation. Uh, we have anyone else here to speak? This <coughs> public hearing. Okay. If no one else is uh, here to speak, I will uh, now close the public hearing and invite the commissioners' uh, comments. Um, commissioners, uh, certainly you have heard um, Ms. Hallman's presentation, and I would like for you to chime in and take a position. Uh, any, anyone want to kick off or start? <coughs> Commissioners, anyone have any comment? Commissioner Geider. Yes, and uh, Jennifer, if you would come up uh, to the podium, please. Um, do you, what was the normal growth before 2009, before the decline in the market? Do you, do you keep any statistics <coughs> Beyond that, um, I probably yeah I could probably go back and look and see what the growth was, but I would say that probably we would it was budgeted around one to two percent a year, but what it actually occurred, I'm not I don't have that information. But what I can was get 2009 it. again? It, it um, the screen changed before I could see it. <laughs> Because I that didn't reflect the de decline in the market, did it? Um, no, we actually. Um, <coughs> let's see. Yeah, 2009 is is on this graph as far as I go back. Um, was we were at 4.3 um, value of a meal, and then it wasn't until 2010 that we took a dive of around 13 percent. Um, in the value of the mill, and then it continued to decline all the way through 2014. Uh, what was the growth in 2009? I don't have that with me, but I can get that I for you. I thought you did on a, another slide. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's beyond, it's prior to that. Oh, yes. Um, when we talked about the new growth. Uh-huh. Yes, ma'am. Two thousand nine point six two percent of new growth. It's what I can't see. It, it was new growth point six two percent. Point six two. So we're at seven as far as uh, new growth. No, not we're at three something. The growth stage. Yes. Uh, now, when you uh, were talking about the commercial property, you said uh, in in another slide you said it did not include the exemption, or it included the in exemptions. <clears throat> Are you saying, <coughs> excuse me, that that's the gross assessments or that the exemptions have been taken off of it before you gave that figure? 
Are you talking about the chart, the chart where I'm comparing each category? Is this chart? No, it's forward, I think. Because that's the only chart. When I talked about the no, exemptions. You've got the comment includes exemptions on the slide. I think that may be it. Um, yeah, anytime when we're talking about the net digest, it's always net of exemptions. Okay, so you're not talking about the gross. All right. That. Okay. Because uh, you can look at it both ways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but when the tax assessments go up, and on 75% of the uh, people here in Douglas County, people and businesses, okay, most of the time it doesn't affect homeowners so much because we have what we call the floating homestead that, that mm -hmm. as the assessment goes up, <clears throat> the uh, exemption goes up. Correct. So it kind of offsets the homeowners and everything. However, it does affect commercial, especially the small businesses. And so the example that you show on the average home, does it really apply to them? Because their assessment could have gone up. Do you have any idea how much um, the reassessment applied just to the commercial? I do not have that. Um, because uh, you had asked Benny to be here to go over any of that detail because I don't get that detail. But that's why on the example of taxes paid, uh, that's why you have to show a non-homestead exemption and then one with a homestead exemption. Yeah, uh, but that it really does apply so much here in Douglas County because we have the floating homestead mm -hmm. on the homes per se. However, it does not apply to a rental house because mm -hmm. there are no exemptions on rental houses. There are not any exempt. There are not any exemptions on small businesses. Uh, a lot of the large businesses have the abatement. Uh, they're in an abatement plan where they don't pay tax or they pay a, just a small percentage of tax. But the small businessman where all the jobs are created, especially locally, it does affect them 100%. If their assessment goes up, then their taxes are going to go up a lot more than $19. Does that make sense? Yeah, it depends on what their fair market value yes. would be. And but the $19 was based upon a, a non-homestead, no exemptions, at $200,000. Uh, could you get, before we have to adopt the um, millage and everything, could you get the figures of how um, commercial property uh, and small well, the small businesses would fall in there too, how they will be affected by all of this? Now, you also said um, that the school board was going up and um, and you said we would, if we adopted this millage rate, we would go up, but you didn't say anything about the city residents. Are they not going, is the city council going up on their millage rate also? I'm not aware of all the cities like Villarica or Austell. Um, and speaking with the finance director for City of Douglasville, Karen Callen, I believe that they were going through the process of advertising of not rolling back as well. Okay, so they, the city residents, they're going to be paying, uh, not the residents, but, well, they're not exempted on their houses unless they're over a certain age inside the city. Correct. Yeah. So they would, might see. What I'm trying to point out, there's compounded increases. It's not just uh, us. But um, also in your figures, did you, um, anticipate how much we may not spend on the 2019 budget that we may have excess at the end? We're not at that point yet. It's too early on in that the will, year. That will apply when we're setting the budget, I guess, for next year. For 2020. But we're normally 4%, something around. Usually that. around 2%. So there's a there could possibly be a million dollars that is not in any of our figures yet. <laughs> 
as far as budget and everything like that. So, uh, because there's always, we've always had to use estimates, uh, uh, trends and things mm -hmm. like that. So uh, if you would get those figures for me, for me and break it out as far as the um, uh, commercial small business, especially the small businesses. Maybe. I'll have to check with Benny. I don't know if their information, if their database keeps up with small business versus I think it's well, just commercial. Well, you can take the assessment above uh, a certain amount and just include the ones below there. But if you would just get those figures for me, I'd like to just see them because uh, we all know that the small businesses um, are the ones that produce a lot of the jobs, the local jobs. And so uh, that's my concern. We don't want to put them out of business either. <laughs> and um, it will affect apartments um, because uh, the rent may go up if the apartments have been reassessed and then they have the tax increases and all of them, most of them are in the city. A lot of them's in the city. So they, they're gonna be compounded as far as, uh, and they pay school tax, they pay city tax and they would pay uh, the property tax here. But if you would just kind of look at that, um, I know that one of our commissioners has said uh, quite often that um, they have a lot of foreclosures in their district uh, and everything. Um, the, but most of the time, the taxes here in Douglas County, if they're homesteaded homes, <coughs> it doesn't affect them because of the floating homestead. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to kind of clarify that and get maybe some other figures. Sure, With yeah, that, see what I, I can do. I'll give back. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Kreider. Any other comment from the board? <coughs> you look like you want to say something. Okay, yeah, because I can see you. Sure. All right. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, to the citizens, um, this is a public hearing. This is one of three. And I, um, from a District 2's perspective, and this is important, uh, I'm not representing as a vice chairman at this moment because, again, I have to respect the insights, the interests of District 2. And, and so here we are. Um, for the past 10 years, and, and Director Hallman, thank you very much for that, that overview. It was solid, you didn't need to go any longer. That was, that was sufficient enough details. Um, but I would encourage my citizens to take a look at it. It's some very good information. You have a couple more times to come out and speak. Um, we were at our retreat, which was a public meeting. It was important as we had this conversation of setting was, uh, we, we concluded in our conversation, like, well, let's take it to the public. Take it to the public. Right, get, get their input. Public engagement is important to give them insight in what we're doing. Always sharing where we're going, what's happening. Um, I go back to the 2016 SPLOS. It was important that after those eight years and a millage rate increase of 24%, it was one of those where we, we, it was important that you talk to the citizens and let them know where we're going. Right? So in 2016, and we're out there doing the road shows and six town halls and and, and, and sort of educating the public on what it was, um, obviously input came in that says, okay, there was something that was important to them. And at the conclusion of all these public engagement, we realized that um, there's some vertical buildings that were necessary. Um, not just community centers and senior centers, but also fire stations that are important to everybody. Small, big, commercial, industrial, doesn't matter. And what we realized is that as we came out of the recession, that okay, we have a lot of inward focus. The application of the tax dollars was focused on jails. I mean, I, I mean, 120 million, no maintenance of anything. But we get righteous all of a sudden that now we're going to take care of the citizens. We take care of our staff. You guys know, no problem. But what about the citizens? The extraction of that dollar for that period of time, or we'll spend five million cash on an animal shelter, 80 cats and dogs, but yet what about the citizens? The taxation has already occurred. The question is how do you apply it, right? So for District 2, and I'm, I'm going to stay right there. 
Uh, this is not something new. We knew this day would come where, from a, a, without politicizing monetary policy, it's math. If you look at the trajectory of our, 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 our positions over time, roll back, roll back, roll back, roll back. And we look at how coming out of recession, everything naturally is going to inflate economics 101. It's going to inflate. Values of houses are going to appreciate. Everything is going to go back up. So if you're rolling back the taxation, but the natural inflation of things are going up, those two are going to eventually come together. Our auditor made this comment maybe last month, this month uh, recently, um, that uh, while that is uh, a, a fiscal responsible way to manage budgets. Stepping away from my perspective, it was acknowledged that, but that's not sustainable because there's always a macro effect. So for, for District 2, I'm just taking a position that my leaning is not to roll back, and it's clear. Um, just because I'm only, I'm, I'm only cautious about the next 18 months. I said it in the, in the budget retreat, so this is important to get it an open record so you don't have to go dig anything up. It's like, okay, I get everything. Everything's steady. Okay, steady. 18 months. Right? You can't control what you can't control. You can't control steel. We can anticipate those things. My thing is just it's more of a balance sheet view. I'm not going to get into the day-to-day. -day. I don't work day-to-day. -day. That's not my responsibility. That's not what you hired me to do. But it do bring a certain perspective like, okay, hmm, let's, let's, let's make sure we're okay. We have some things that you as citizens acknowledge that you wanted to see. Let's make sure we got sufficiency for it. You can't have a Taj Mahal jail and a Taj Mahal animal shelter, but yet as the citizen just spoke to, uh, it can't be an empty building either, right? Because we set expectations of what could happen. So with that saying yes, build the capital part, there should have been discipline also along the way to make sure you can accommodate the soft costs associated with that, right? And just being honest and transparent as we've always been in District 2. This is not new to you. Uh, I look forward to your feedback either um, tonight at, I believe the next meeting is at 6 o'clock, Director Hallman, is that, can somebody confirm, is it 6 o'clock tonight? Yes. 6 yes, o'clock tonight. Correct. Um, or in our next meeting, um, it, it'll be again. So I look forward to District 2. Please um, send me your comments. Please show up during the public hearings and weigh in, and, um, and we'll go from there. Madam Chair, I yield. Thank you so much, Vice Chairman Robinson. Any other comments? Okay. Oh, okay, thank you, Commissioner Mitchell. Yes, and I'll, I'll be brief. I, I just want to go back to a couple of moments that you stated. The amount that, I guess, the value of a millage rate, mm -hmm. at least at this time in juncture, uh, what's that value now? Because I know that's what's important, but we got to also understand, and I'm not going to go and say again. Yes, uh, oh. 4643000 Right. And the amount in dollars so that the average citizen can get this rollback if it happens. You said something about $20 roughly that... For a, uh, for a for homestead, a it would be $15.49. Okay. For a non-homestead, $19.36. Right, and we can't, we don't calculate that. What I want to make sure that we all understand that we, we've had this conversation many years ago, many times about rollbacks. I'm, I'm a proponent. I think rollbacks are good. But I think the citizens deserve better than that. And what I mean by that is if by chance we decide to do a rollback, I would support it. However, we have to also understand that the citizens made a request <clears throat> during the SPLOST and asked for several buildings, fire stations, radio systems, all these great things that they want as services that we need to accommodate the citizens of Douglas County. So with that being said, Back in 2012, 13, when we did the 23% mm -hmm. millage rate increase to fix what I called, and I stated this many years ago, the problem 
occur from things like the rollback, things like uh, the lost negotiations, things like the SDS, and so on. And as I stated then, if we continue down that path, we would get what we got, and it wasn't this administration, but I was a part of it, that we would get a 23 or an increase in the millage rate. Not, this is not a millage rate increase. This is due to new growth and assessed values, correct? Correct, this is okay. uh, due to the reassessment growth. Reassessment, I'm sorry, reassessment, yes. So with that, no one is getting, there's not this 2012-13 millage rate increase. That's not what we're having this discussion about, correct? Correct. This okay. is a 2.43% increase. Correct. So, so with that, so for those that during that tenure and decided to do a millage rate increase, understood that's what they were, they involved themselves on the rollbacks for the many years before that, and that's what got them in the hole that, that we were in at that time, and the only way out, which I stated, would be a millage rate increase, and that's what we end up doing. Let me back up. Not I, because I didn't support it, but that's what the administration at that time decided to do, though. So with that all being said, though, I think we have to caution ourselves when it comes to this rollback, and I've always stated that with the, the up-and-coming things in the coffer that we need to concern ourselves with comes a cost of doing business. We've already rolled back from this administration roughly about $5 million, if my math is correct. Mm -hmm. If we continue down that same path, as I've stated on many times when it came to the rollback, if we continue down that path, we'll end up where we were back in 2012, 13, with a possible 23% or whatever that millage rate increase would be. Because when I'm out uh, in the general public talking with, through my coughing conversations and various community meetings, I ask the question about, would you prefer this, a millage rate, not, not a millage rate, but a rollback with the amount of, at one time it was as high as 25 or $50, and I don't want to get into the math, but, or would you want us to continue to provide the services that not with a millage rate increase, but the services like the fire stations, the new fire stations and equipment, uh, the, the new radio system and so on. And most tend to have that conversation with me and say, you might as well keep that. But what they don't want is a millage rate increase. But if we do what we're doing and continue down the same path, that's what I think we'll end up getting. And that's what I wanna make sure we don't get the confusion of this is not a millage rate increase. I just, that's a nod, yes, okay. Well, if, if, technically from okay. depart, I don't want to confuse well, what we've been advertising. That's, all, that's the Roy, only thing. Roy Barnes' way of saying uh, with the, the assessed values, it's considered a, a tax increase, not a millage rate increase, but it'll be a millage rate roll gotcha. back. Yeah. It'll be a millage rate roll back if we roll back. Yeah, the, what's being proposed right now is the exact same millage rate as it was that's in correct. 2018. So correct. nothing changes with the millage rate is what I'm getting at. Now, what we have to also understand too though is this. For those of us who have homes, and I'll only use the, the property side, uh, the home property side of this versus the commercial side of it, and we'll get more information about that though. But uh, when, you, when, you, when you're living in your home, you, your home, as far as paying taxes, is not worth as much. And you have that option of fighting those mm -hmm. who say that your assessed value is more. But when you sell that same home, mm -hmm. you tend to say your house is worth a whole lot more. Mm -hmm. You can't have it both ways. Mm -hmm. But I get it. <laughs> because I'm here doing the same thing, fighting uh, mm -hmm. the assessments, the assessors about my value of my properties. I always do it, but at the end of the day, but when I sell it, it's worth, you know, <laughs> a, a whole lot more. So I, I just want us to make sure that we understand that. I, I, I get it. I, I understand for those of us who sit on this board would like to do a rollback, it doesn't make sense. It won't get us down the road when we get those other things out of the pipeline, like the Senior Citizen Center, unless we will have a building with, no in the, with nobody in the building or no employees, um, no services. So why build the building? 
if you're not going to provide the service. So I, I want us to think long and hard. And I, I know my colleagues, there are some who don't want to see this happen this way, and there are some that do. I, I'll let them speak on their own behalf, but I just think this is the right thing to do is to move forward because of the services that we want to continue to serve and provide to the citizens of Douglas County, and that is service of excellence. And you can't do that without some form of a cost associated with that. So I don't know how else to say it. Um, this would be a, a great start in the right direction. Uh, I'm not a proponent for a millage rate increase, but I promise you, as I stated back then, 13, 12 and 13, we'll, we, we're digging ourselves in a hole for the last two years of what we've done thus far. If we, if we do it again and continue that route, I will support it and I'll roll back. However, just do understand, as I stated to my colleague that sits uh, on this board now, when that time comes for that millage rate increase, then don't ask for my support then. I yield back. Okay. You good? Okay. Okay. Commissioner Carthen. For this morning, I am shocked that we don't have more constituents here, but I do understand people work. I would implore our citizens to utilize the Celebrate Douglas website. You can email us. We are your mouthpiece up here. When you want to see parks beautified, when you want to see the grass cut, when you want to see the sheriff come around and patrol your neighborhoods, when you want those quality of services, we have to pay for those things. We have to staff those budgets. We need to hear your voice. So if you don't give us what you think what, what you want, then we'll have to think about it for you. And I don't want to do that. You elected me to be your voice. So let me know what you want. Email me. Call the office. We are here to serve you. So at 6 o'clock, I hope we'll have more. But um, if you can't get here, email us. That's my comment. Are you are you're back? Thank you. Okay, well, I guess I'll just close it. Uh, with my I'm I sorry. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Guider, you have one more yes, comment. Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Jennifer, of course, back in 19, uh, 2009 is when the decline of the mm -hmm. market, so our digest was going down <coughs> rather than climbing. This year, under new growth, you anticipate under the new revenue from the growth almost $4 million, right? Is that not what this is, cumulative? Is this, what does this mean? This last column? Uh-huh, um, no, the, uh, the new growth, the revenue. That, it, whoops. That is revenue cumulatively that we have rec uh, received in, or levied for in new growth. In the past, five years, six Correct. years, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. The first three were negative Correct. because mm -hmm. of the decline in the, uh, the digest. Mm -hmm. um, but as of today, because of the new, just new growth only, counting through 2019, it's $4 million increase. Now go over to the next column with it. It says cumulative growth because of reassessment. Mm -hmm and we've accumulated nine more million dollars. That is if we did not roll back. That's if we did not roll that back. That is the value if we did not roll back the additional revenue we would have received. Say that again. If we do not roll back. Right. Correct. If we did not, I was asked to what the value would have been if we would have maintained the same millage rate and not rolled back meaning we'd have kept the same millage rate from 2014 going forward. If we did not roll back, then we would have um, cumulatively through 2019 received. Well, where's, where's the reassessment growth uh, b because we did roll back? Do you have that figure on here? It would be revenue neutral. 
if you look at column that says increase, decrease in revenue from prior year, you can see that um, we rolled back. The reassessment back. couldn't be neutral. I mean, because. If we uh, roll back, it makes it neutral. Does it make all of it neutral? It makes it as, as neutral as the formulas allow. That's the whole purpose of the rollback is to make it, and that's what the Department of Revenue says. Well, they it have depends on how much your assessment, each individual person's But in total for the up. digest, in total for the digest, you have to come up with a millage rate equivalent for a rollback to make it where you're revenue neutral for that year if you roll back. So for this year, the rollback, how much more revenue would it bring in? One point one million dollars. One point one. So that's what we're, this is all about, is one million um, dollars. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, this uh, cumulative revenue over here it says reassessment gross. That was confusing because it looked like it that was um, from reassessment growth. So it would have been if we chose not to roll back. Okay, but another, the, the main fact that I wanted to bring out was back in 2019, the digest was going down. Now for 2000, as of January next year, we should have switch on the digest, which is uh, uh, at least on the uh, personal property. Of course, they're under a tax abatement. Maybe we ought to look at not giving all these companies all these tax abatements. <laughs> but uh, we 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 uh, Google the first phase is on there at 100 percent, and they're building a second phase, so they're going to be on there. So um, we're seeing a lot of growth, is what I'm saying, in the digest. So uh, it's it's beginning to. Um, it's going to help us as far as uh, paying the bills and things like that. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, I know we've got to man the, the senior center and now the, the youth center, but you're not really talking about that many employees just for those two little facilities. But the uh, fire station will be. However, we will be able to build the fire station and buy all the equipment under the splash. Mm -hmm. So uh, normally when we build a new fire station, we have to pay for that out of our, uh, our budget. So uh, this is uh, with the splash, and that is also a tax increase too, <laughs> to everybody. If you go out and buy something here in Douglas County, you're going to pay an extra penny on the dollar. So that, that's another in, increase in taxes that we have implemented in the past three years. Our voters voted that one in, so that's, uh, that's their choice. But um, I'm just saying that we are seeing a lot of growth in the digest uh, that we did not see for many years from 2009 to 2017 or 16 we saw no growth and and so we're beginning to get it get that growth back the values of our homes are going up and that's a good thing if you go to sell it but uh, uh, not so much if you're just staying there so mm -hmm. but uh, any the way I just wanted to clarify this um, I think you've got it up there mm -hmm. on the thing uh, clarify the figures in those columns. Okay, and with that, I yield back. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner uh, Guider. Well, I'll just close uh, with saying that uh, we would be in a whole different position if we didn't have the splost. So I would be in a whole different mindset. But I'm here every day as the uh, chairman of the county, so I'm in the in the bowels of the operation. So I have an opportunity to see exactly how the money flows in and out and how things move in terms of the finance department. Work very closely with the finance team and the county administrator. And I just believe in conduct, uh, conducting uh, comparative analysis and um, look at looking at trends. And when I uh, looked at my trends, 
I noticed after conducting a, a comparison analysis of the trends related to new growth and the rollback, the history of the pre previous administration versus this administration, I, I just feel wholeheartedly uh, that this is, that I cannot support increasing the millage rate at this time in good conscience, simply because I've had an opportunity to scrutinize and safeguard, and that's the purpose of me being here to scrutinize and safeguard our taxpayers' uh, hard-earned dollars. But let me tell you what I did so you can say, I didn't react, I wanted to look. I spent uh, probably um, a copious amount of time just trying to go through some notes and look. I looked from the period 2014 through, through 2016 under the previous administration, and they only gained 4.6% new growth and they roll back each year, 14, 15, and 16. And then I looked in contrast from 2017 to 2019 with this administration, and our new growth has been 10.91%, almost at 11%. We roll back uh, 18, um, 17 and 18, but we were just discussing 19. So that was, that was a little difficult for me to swallow, so I said, well, leave that alone and go to something else because my colleague said, how are we gonna be sustainable for the next 18 months? I said, well, I need to do some homework before I go either way. What I did, I noticed, I looked, I took a deep dive at things that are, that are known that's gonna happen to this budget, and I was able to quantify at least $4.6 million that's gonna be, that's a known, such as our new growth ex excess is 800,000. Our unclaimed funds, I just trimmed it down to 900,000. A TAVT increase, which is the tax, Avalorum tax. We just uh, start, we, we went from 57% and when our new house bill, Jennifer, what is that house bill? 389. 389, we will receive an additional $1.2 million next year. And that's a just pro projection because typically we were receiving like, we were receiving about 450, uh, dollars a month, but with that increase from 57% to 65%, so we are projected to proceed to receive an additional 1.2 million dollars uh, a year. I'm sorry, I don't want to say a month. And then our lost revenue, lost revenues have just trended uh, and exceeded our projections uh, by 1.2 million, and we're expecting those. Hopefully, if the economy stay to continue, I mean to continue to trend, and also the Greta funds. 575,000, we will be amending the budget in a couple of weeks. And so when I added all those numbers up, that was 4.675,000 4, uh, 4, uh, that's just, that's a known. Then I looked at projected unknowns. We got sales tax coming online January 2020 for all those online sales. So we don't know what that's gonna look like, but it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be okay. And then we have Stitch Fit fixed that's opening in October. We have switch. I understand that the CO, which is the certificate of occupancy, will be, um, we will be receiving that in December. And then we haven't even looked at the items that are not on the digest, which is those items that are not on the uh, digest yet. Uh, uh, the tax commissioner has assured me, and also uh, our tax assessor, they're still crunching numbers, so there's more to come. Then uh, MSI uh, presented a check of $630,000 to, uh, to the uh, Benefits Committee uh, the other day because of a credit. We have a credit, and that will, of course, uh, offset some costs this year, but uh, that 630000 comes at a time where we didn't know we were gonna get that. So I say all that to say this. We have to manage a budget. We can't allow the, the budget to manage us. Mm -hmm. And I feel that uh, right now, I just, when I crunched the numbers last night and came up with $4.6 million, I said, I, I, I don't support uh, uh, increase in the millage rate. And uh, of course, this is just my personal view. And uh, again, I'm just one vote. So with that being said, I, that is my analysis in a nutshell. Uh, and then I, let me talk about those buildings that's coming online. Those buildings are, uh, like for example, a senior center does not require a lot of staffing. And then also that uh, multi-purpose center does not either. But I, if we look at the fire station, we look long range, that's 2023 when we're looking at that fire station to come online. So that fire station, uh, would, would now we don't wanna dismiss that we have SDS, which is service delivery, which we need, that, will, that means the cities will help 
uh, absorb some of that cost, and that means they're gonna, they will participate in some of the operating costs as well. So with my analysis, uh, I just feel that it's my obligation as the chairman of this board of commissioners to, to just tell the truth to the citizens and be very transparent based on my analysis. So with that being said, um, board of commissioners, if we don't have anything else, um, I would like to just uh, see if we have any other comments before I call to close this public hearing. Yeah, sure. uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah. And and again, I appreciate always, um, again, as, as a couple of us have said, we, we really want um, public engagement to get involved in this process, um, but not to make this difficult. Um, um, you don't want to make it too deep. Um, at, at the end of the day, uh, the district commissioners are a, a, a sort of a check and balance. You hire one person to run it, you send four people to check that administration accordingly, just to see and balance. This is a balancing conversation. There's no heroics. It's a team and it's democracy. And we work together. We all look at things from a very, very different perspective. That's why you hired us. So what I ask the citizens to do is to hear all of us for how y'all sent us down here. And, and, and take a collective voice on what you're listening to. I, I agree with Commissioner Carthen. I don't like to do you your voice. I've, I've, I've served for 10 years. I know how to listen, right? But also in, in that anticipation, it's like, um, when, you, when I'm looking at the, when you ask for that, those, that sploss, and that's really what my position simply comes down to. It's like, I can hear people say what they say, but I'm like, yeah, but, we didn't have two years to plan for this. And this is sort of what Commissioner Mitchell sometimes says, he, you, you have to listen to him. Like, y'all not listening. That loss is gonna catch you. The rollbacks are gonna catch you. It, it's one of those, well, where was the discipline? And this is the comment, like, but we, we shouldn't have to hustle. It, it should be there. And, and it's like, yeah, but I, I see everything, and I'm like, yeah, but let's just make sure that we're, there's peace. And that's, that's, I, I think at the end of the day, we have to cast a vote from a place of, yeah, but those are all things that you had no control over. What we have control over is what we, 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 we as we, this budget that we're setting is for last year. This is important. What we're setting it's for the budget that we're currently in. And if we have to amend mid-year our budget to accommodate priorities, like expansion of healthcare services, um, to, to deal with DOT, to, to probably have to anticipate um, um, things that I call healthcare, or it's like, we're, we're, I, I don't wanna paint this avatar of reality. Like, yeah, I hear y'all. But look at the moves of the Board of Commissioners and the contrast it to meet the current budget we had to amend without acknowledging that we need to be savings for these, these verticals. I'm like, yeah, okay. I hear y'all. Y'all got this, though. I'm just one vote. But I'm, I'm trying to be okay. Now, I'm not gonna, my, the next public hearing, I'm pretty much gonna listen and hopefully people will show up, but this is it, and then we'll cast our vote on the last one. But it, this is not necessarily a sales moment. Uh, I always say there are certain moments where we as Board of Commissioners have to go in our corners, take a position, and we all have to be accountable to our citizens on why we take positions. Um, so, so this one is pretty, we, we have to all look at it from, you know, I'm not messaging to anyone. It's simply everybody take a position, Look at this and do what's in the best interest of the county from our perspective. And whatever the majority is, that's what it becomes. Madam Chair, I yield. Thank you so much, Vice uh, Chairman Robinson. Uh, to the public, I just wanted to announce that we do have another public hearing uh, to this evening at 6 p.m. And we, um, I echo the voices of my fellow commissioners. We hope that we have a very robust uh, uh, crowd and participation tonight. 
so we could hear from you because you are the citizens and we want to hear your voice because we, we operate based on your needs and, and, and the things that you want us to consider. Okay, with that being said, Board of Commissioners, we, uh, this public hearing is closed, of what is over and has ended, so at this time, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.